Good morning, Church. We welcome you to our worship service this Sunday, and we are glad that you were able to join us online. As we start our worship service, I request you to have this moment of contemplation, of meditation through our praise and worship, and may we be able to intune our spirit, the Spirit of God, this moment. As Psalm 104 verses 33 to 34 says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to Him as I rejoice in the Lord. Sing again, I see a generation. Let's all say Jose. 
all names and we praise we worship you this morning as we have a worship service as one church we pray oh god as we come before you please cleanse us of the sins we have done we ask for forgiveness so that we can worthy to ascend thy holy hill as we give praises and honor O oh lord may it reach your throne and give us hearts Give us spirits to in tune with you in our worship. For we worship you in spirit and in truth. Just as you said to the Samaritan woman, we come before you with authenticity, with a heart that is open and willing to accept that we are sinners and that we need you in our lives. Bless everyone who will be joining with us this worship service we ask that we will be able to have minds open as the holy spirit reveals to us things which we have not yet known all of these things we pray in the matchless name of our savior in jesus christ amen amen if you have your bibles with you i invite you to please rise you can open them to first chronicles chapter 16 verses 23 to 29 for a scripture responsive reading in first chronicles chapter 16 23 to 29 let me begin with verse 23 sing to the lord all the earth proclaim his salvation day after day For great is the Lord, and most worthy of the praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. All together, let us read. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. You may now be seated. May the good Lord bless us upon the reading of his word. Let us now give this time to Reverend Arnel J. Masitas as he gives and leads us in our pastoral prayer. Beloved the Lord, wherever you are, Please join with me as uh, we pray. And I want to give you these uh, verses today taken from 
the book of uh, Thessalonians that says, May the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Let us now come to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord our God, we thank you so much for this uh, privilege again that we could pray together, synchronizing each other in different parts of this world. Thank you, Lord, for the means where we could worship Thee again in spirit and in truth. We are still experiencing this pandemic time, O oh God, but we thank you for your faithfulness, O oh Lord. We fall short of the many things, O oh God, but you continue to be faithful to us because you are our God. Lord, cleanse us, forgive us for the many things we've done in words, in thoughts, and even in our deeds. Prepare us, Lord, for your message. Bless the answer. Bless thy people, those who are joining with us, members abroad and local, our dear pastors from different parts of the world. We ask the Father that may continue to make use of this time and of the part of our online worship for us to grow more spiritually. Let your Spirit, O God, continue to fall on us. And today, we still continue to pray for our brethren, especially those who are sick. We still continue to pray for the elders of our church. We still continue to pray for those who are sick, O God, in their sick bed. And even for those who are undergoing chemotherapy and dialysis. Lord, may you continue to give them wisdom and knowledge. And even discernment, Lord, that in this time of pandemic, although they are in this situation, you still have your own ample time for them to serve you in their own ways as you lead them. Father, we continue to pray also for our frontliners. May I continue to be with them. We pray, O oh God, for whatever challenges they're encountering every day. Probably there are some discriminations also out there. Probably, O oh God, they felt discouraged, lonely, and depressed. Lord, let your spirit continue to fall on them so that they will continue to be patient and learn to persevere to whatever situation, to whatever trials and struggles they encounter. Father, we still continue to pray for our needs financially, emotionally, physically, mentally, in all aspects of our lives. We still continue to pray for the needs of our church. We still continue to pray for the needs of your people joining with us in this worship. We still continue to pray for our children as they prepare for their studies while some other are, are still uh, uh, doing their uh, uh, online uh, studies already. May I continue to grant wisdom and knowledge for them. Lord, of all the things that we are praying to you, don't know always everything, Lord. And we just want to let you know that we cannot do all of these things without you. And so, Lord, we're just begging for your mercies and grace to answer us. Because we ask you all these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Masitas. Let us now be ready to hear the Word of God through our choir as they sing, hear our praises, and to be followed by Reverend Francis Neil G. Halandoon as he gives God's message entitled, Let Us Sing the Magnificat. Let us ready our hearts.
Good morning, good noon, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are right now. We thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity that we can once again be together through this online worship experience. We thank God for His unfailing mercies to all of us. Sa sininga adlaw mga kuturan ng ato pamalandungan na nungod sa musika sa gihapon. Because there is something in singing or listening to songs that penetrates directly to the heart. It can move our emotions. It is not just in the words but in the music as well. And we thank God for the gift of music. Today, my friends, what we will ponder upon is a song. This is actually called the first Christmas song, and we call it the Magnificat. Today's message is entitled, Let Us Sing the Magnificat. Si E. Stanley Jones, isa ka famous Methodist preacher and scholar, gintawag niya ini nga Christmas song as the most revolutionary document in the history of the world. Wow! Grabe nga pagplastar niya sa sini nga kanta nga ginatawag The Magnificat. William Temple, the Archbishop of Canterbury, instructed missionaries to poverty-stricken India during the time nga nagapadala ang uh, UK sa mga missionary sa India. Sila niya to read the words of this Christmas song in the public is to incite riots. So please do not read this Christmas song in public because this Christmas song is a very powerful song. One modern writer said that when you read the lyrics of this song, you sniff the powder of dynamite. Wow! Siling ina ni Walter Shorten sa ginsulat niya sa The Baptist Studies Bulletin. My friends, this song, as I have said earlier, is referred as or called as the Magnificat. This is, the name is in Latin because thousands of years ago, this song, it started with the word in English, magnify. So, ginubra ina sa Latin, kagintagaan sa titulo nga Magnificat. Kay bangod, diri, nagahambal si Maria. Ang iloy ni Kristo Jesus, my soul magnifies the Lord. Mga kuturan, ang ini nga kanta nga ang tigulo the Magnificat is the original work of an unmarried teenage peasant girl who just found out that she is pregnant. A girl we know as Mary. Nga a girl tawag naton because she was a teenager during the time that she got pregnant. Now, most young and wed girls do not just burst into song when they hear news that they are pregnant. Subong ya, ate, kung ikaw nagabusong at teenager ka palang, ka palang ng biton, imong ginikanan, ang imong pamilya, ikaw mismo nasubuan kung natabu ina sa imo. But Mary burst into a song. There was something about Mary that made all the difference. The Magnificat comes in the story that we call the Visitation. Ginbisitahan si Maria, ah, nagbisita, nagbisita si Maria sa iya nga pariente nga si Elizabeth. The meeting of these two women is very significant for all of us. Kanami isang setting. One is old, in which Elizabeth, ang iyakasin, nagbusong at igulang na, ginbugayan sang Diyos. One is young. And both of them were pregnant during the time. Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist, the one who prepared the way of the Lord. The older, as I've said, is carrying the forerunner, John the Baptist, and the younger one is carrying the Messiah. Ano ay han ang ilagi ni Sturian sa sina mga binulan ni Mary kag ni Elizabeth? Inabangod nga nagkanto dito si Mary kay hindi na siguro ma magwantahan man ang mga chismes kagang sa palibot niya nga nagapakanubo siya kay nagbusong siya nga wala pa siya sang bana. Now Luke's account is very fascinating. He records that on the arrival of Mary sa balay ni Elizabeth at the moment that she greeted Elizabeth, the baby, and that is John the Baptist, 
nagtumbo sa sulod sang tiyan ni Elizabeth. The first witness of the Baptist to the Christ during that time was in the womb of Elizabeth and in the womb of Mary. Wow! Kung na ito makita mo ng kabuhi ni John the Baptist, tanan nag-focus siya, kag nag-asintro sa pagpangwali, sa repentance, kag mag sa Messiah nga amo si Jesus Christ. Sa sugod palang gali sa tiyan ni nanay niya, nagsugod na siya sa sini nga buluwaton niya. Si uh, John the Baptist became the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ and it started in the womb of her, Mary, of her mother, Elizabeth. At that moment, mga kuturan, uh, grabe na punan sa balaan niya ispirito. Kag, kung napunan ikaw sa balaan niya ispirito, ang matabo sa si mo, ang mo nga ma-empowered ikaw. Kag bakod si na, si, si Mary, kag si Elizabeth, grabe ang natabo sa ila nga pag-meet during the time. Elizabeth was given by God the divine inspiration, the divine knowledge that could come from no human agency. Siling niya, si Mary is to be the mother of the Lord. So Elizabeth bows in Mary's presence and she cried out. Anong iyang again hambal ng mga tinaga, the very famous ones. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? mga tinaga ina ni Elizabeth. Mga kuturan, Elizabeth interpreted that the leaping of her child inside her womb as a leap for joy. Grabe nga kalipay nga naglumbayag sa sulod sa niya chan si John the Baptist. She is the first one to declare that Mary is blessed. And she commends Mary for her belief. Siling niya kay Mary, blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Katahom sa sininga mga tinaga, mga kuturan, nga ang Diyos nagagamit sa mga kababayanan. And si Elizabeth nagdeklarar nga bulahan ka Maria, kay nagpati ikaw, ka nagtuo ikaw, nga matuman, kag matuman ang ginhambal sa Diyos sa imo. In, in contrast to her husband Zechariah, Si Zechariah nag refuse to believe at first nga mga magabusong ang iya asawa. Ang muning rason nga ginhimo siya sang Dios nga apa. Can you imagine halin sang gin reveal sang Dios kay wala ka nagpati, why ka balambal apa si Zechariah? And then at the moment of the birth of John the Baptist later on, the first word that came out from the mouth of Zechariah is John. The word John ngang ngalan sang ila bata si John. Now the response of Mary to Elizabeth sa ginhambalan sa blessed are you Mary, amo ni ginatawag naton the magnificat. This is this joyful meeting of pregnant women both of home caught up in the in God's extraordinary initiative to fulfill God's promises to mankind. The magnificat is a joyful forceful, active hymn of praise. Kagkun magpaminsar kita sa kame, kay Mary, sometimes we think na do ka passive kay Mary, do maluming, malumaymay, no? restrained, kag, uh, do ka demure, nga do uh, kahay sang itsura, yabala sa mga istatwa nga makita na to, nga do why, do why sang ikasarang, no? do tama ka weak ang iya itsura. But no, my friends, There is nothing passive about the song of Mary. It has similarities with the prayer and song of Hannah in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 2. It is also, makita natin ini, sa, sa iyan ni Leia nga story in Genesis chapter 29 and 30. And the book of Habakkuk and uh, more than one of the Psalms, kung makita natin. So grabe nga kombinasyon ang ining kanta nga the, the Magnificat ni Mary. In other words, it weaves together no? the whole body of the Old Testament material into a hymn form. Kag dri na to makita nga ining mga bagay nga ginkanta ni Maria, isa ka summary of the hope of salvation. Nga mga tao nagalaom nga may kaluwasan, a hope 
of the Messiah, a hope of the coming of Christ. Kadrisag sinulatan ni Lucas, the Magnificat sets a manifesto. And the gospel, makita naton, goes on to show how powerful this manifesto was fulfilled. My friends, pwede na ito ma-divide, ininkanta ni Mary into three sections. These divisions can be, also can be standard, can be the standard of our songs and hymns. Kaya tatlo ka bagay ang i-share na ako sa inyo sa Sininaga based on these three sections of the Song of Mary. First, we should sing songs praising God. Magakanta kita sa mga kalantahon nga nagadayaw sa Diyos. The first is the cry of praise of Mary, the first section. Katahom sang iya nga ginpasta ni Maria, let me read. No? Why kita sang record kung anong tuno, sang the magnificat, pero madamo nga mga musician, kung lantahon nyo lang sa YouTube, damo sang videos nga nag-interpret kung ano ang tuno na ginakanta ang the magnificat. But here is the first part. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For He has looked with favor on His lowly servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy is on those who fear Him in every generation. Wow, it's a beautiful expression of worship and praise to God. To worship the one who is mighty, the one who is holy, the one who shows himself as the Savior. Mga kuturan, ining pagkanta ni Maria sa first part sa iyang song, gin accept ya diri ang iya unique situation, ang iya unique vocation. Agang ang iya nga kalipay, kagang iya wonder as being chosen by God, kagin bless ya sa Diyos. There is genuine joy in the song of Mary. Kay she represented the poor, the lowly, and the voiceless. Dari natin makita, mga kuturan, that Mary expands the thought that God's favor is upon all of us. Wala pinilian ang Diyos kung nano man ang imurasa, kung nano man ang imukaintangan sa sining sa syudad because God has chosen Mary, siling ni Mary, a lowly servant. The mighty one, the holy one, is also the merciful one. Dari na itong makita, mga kuturan, nga ang paglaon na ginhatag sa Diyos, ang mga kita, nga mga katawan na galong, na galong kita sa sinang bagay nga paghigugma. Kay bangod yung create ina sa Diyos sa aton, kagita na galong sa iya. In other words, we should always show wonder and awe and reverence towards God because there is a vacuum inside us that longs for God. Kagamoy mingin plaster sa kanta ni Mary. God's response to all of us kung nagatawag kita sa iya, kag nagadayaw kita sa iya. Secondly, we should sing songs that tell about the values of God. Magakanta kita sa mga kalantahon nga nagatudlo sa mga katawan kag nagapahayag kung sino kag ano ang Diyos. The Magnificat sets out these values of God. Let me read the song of the second part of the song of Mary. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. And lifted up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich empty away. Makoturan in this song, very powerful. The second part of the song of Mary, God shows Himself to be against those people who trust in power and riches and status. Kontra sang Dios ang mga tao nga naga simba sa puder. Kontra sa Diyos sa mga tao nga nagasimba sa kwarta. Kontra sa Diyos sa mga tao nga nagasimba sa status, sa position. Dumdumon na ito, ina, mga kuturan, samtang nagapamalandong kita sa ato mga kaintangan, subong. Siling sa Diyos, 
kontraya ang mga tao nga nagapakuno-kuno nga Dios. Because there is some people in our world even today since time immemorial that they thought that they are God. And God ang Dios bahala sa inyo. Ang Dios may tion gate para sa inyo as the song of Mary testifies. The mission of Jesus was directed to those who thought who were outside of salvation. Ang Dios ginpahayag diri nga si nga si Ginoong Hesus si Ling ni Luke ang tanan nga mga tawo nga ginasika-sika akon ina kagtagaan ko sila sang kaluwasan. You see, in the gospel according to Luke, grabe dira ang ang pagkadto ni Jesus Christ sa mga sinners, sa tax collector, sa Samaritan, sa mga lepers, sa women, sa children, those people who were marginalized by society. Amo ginpakita ni Luke, the gospel according to Luke ni Jesus Christ. Nga ginasagod niya ang ina mga tao, kag ginasapak niya ang ina ang mga tao. My friends, those are powerful words from the song of Mary. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven are the lowliest. The first is the last. And it is precisely the poor, the disenfranchised, the marginalized, who can receive the gospel as good news because they have nothing to boast of apart from their need of God. Hindi natin makita ini mga kuturan ang ini nga matahom nga minsay sang kanta ni Mary. Somebody who felt lowly, somebody who felt unimportant, somebody nga ginasika-sika sa lugar sa Nazareth became the mother of the Messiah. Grabe ang wisdom sa Diyos nga gimplastar sa sini nga mga tinion mga kuturan. Yes, the song of Mary is very powerful. Nagapakita nga kontra sa Dios ang mga puderuso. Nagapakita nga kontra sa Dios ang mga tao nga mahakugan. Pero ang Dios nagalift up sa mga lowly nga mga katawhan. Thirdly, and this would be the last, we should sing songs declaring God's faithfulness to His promises. Ari ang mga tinaga ni Mary, the last section. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made our ancestors to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mga kuturan, rin na ito makita nga ang magnificat nagabalik sa tema sang kaluoy, sa tema sang mercy. And on how God fulfilled his promises to his people to Israel. Ang Diyos gali, mga kuturan, uh, patod gid nga ang iya nga mga ginsaad ang iya nga mga promesa iya gid i-fulfill ina in his own time and God fulfilled his promises to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob on the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ mga kauturan ining magnificat is essentially isa ka tanta of Mary saying yes to God her her yes can stand for our yes also Ang paghuo ni Maria sa Dios is the same time ang atong paghuo sa Dios. We can sing her words. We can sing the Magnificat and God will look upon us with mercy for God can can do great things for us and through us. Kun ang paghuo ni Maria nagdala sa ang kaluwasan sa Dios ang atong paghuo amo man nga kita mangimpalagyan sa Dios nga mapalabot naton ang kaluwasan nga yara kay Kristo Hesus sa mga katawan sa palibot. Now let me quote David Kennedy. He said, If Mary represents those without worldly power, those without significance, perhaps God can use even us in our seeming insignificance to be agents of His eternal plan. Mga kuturan, hindi ka magbatsyag na wala ka sa pulos. Mga kuturan, hindi ka magbatsyag na ginasika-sika ka kag wala ka sa may mahimo. Mary did it. Mary became the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. A lowly servant. A marginalized woman lifted up by God. If Mary's song is full of joy, then perhaps we can be encouraged to recapture our joy in what God in Christ has done and is, and is con continued to do in us and for the world. Mga kuturan, 
kung ang magnificat na kaplastar, kung paano gimbaliswa sa Diyos, ang values sa kalibutan, kagimplastar niya kung anong values ang kingdom of God, we should dare sing the magnificat. Kantahon nato na we will be encouraged because we can provoke the situation. We are obligated to reflect upon this, especially on what is happening in our midst right now. Mga kuturan rin na makita nga ang kanta ni Maria, tama kadako nga bagay para sa aton gali nga kalibutan as of this time. Yes, my friends, the Magnificat reminds us that our spiritual growth can only be sustained through praise and worship. Magkanta kita upod sa kay Maria. Tunan natin liwat ang Magnificat. Tunan natin ang mga tinagadira nga nagadala sa dako nga transformation sa aton palibot. Kay dra natin makita kung ano ang Diyos makagamit sa aton kag mga dala sa iya maayong pulong, maayong buhat paagi sa aton nga magabulig kambyo sa sining kalibutan naton. Let us continue to praise and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless us all my friends. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Francis Neil Halandoon, for that message. Let's repair our hearts now to give our tithes, pledges, and offerings.
Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have given us and for proving yourself that you're the source of everything, the owner of everything, O oh Lord. We are just stewards of what you have given us. So we pray right now that you give us, Lord, hearts that are generous, that are open, and that we will not cling to the riches of this world so that when you would call us to the eternal life, we would be able to easily let go of these things. We pray right now that you please provide continually for those who are seeking for their needs. Even, O oh Lord, we remember those brethren who have lost their jobs because of this pandemic. Please, O oh Lord, do not leave them, do not forsake them. Provide for their needs, for their means, and continue to provide for their daily needs, O oh Lord. All of these things we pray in the matchless name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now sing our closing song, our hymn of faith, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, a reminder to always sing praises until the moment we are called to go home and go back to our true place, that is with the Lord. Some song loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, some buff flaming tongues above. Praise the mount of fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I may. to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. can be fleeting in this time and humans knowing that we are always failing that we cannot exceed even step on God's standards so may this line may this song remind us that we allow ourselves for God to hold us tight as only by His grace only by His grace let's sing it one more time Grace, Lord, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to Thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for Thy courts above. Sing, come thou found. Come thou found of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streets of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. 
teach me some melodious song and sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount of face of bonnet, mount of thy redeeming love. Praise the mount. Praise the mount of face of bonnet, mount of thy redeeming love. We thank you, Father, for uh, joining with us in our worship today. And thank you for the people who also who are joining with us. May you continue to be with them as you continue to distribute them in different parts of this world, ministering to people through their profession. And let your choice benediction be upon them all. And now with the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the communion, guidance, and comfort of the Holy Spirit, may it will be with you all. Amen and Amen. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of the Lord. Jesus.